Battery life is probably the most important upgrade that Samsung made with the Z Fold 4. And notice that I didn't say battery size because they actually have the same size battery, but the Z Fold 4 lasts quite a bit longer. There are several other important upgrades. There are a few opportunities for improvements and thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring a portion of this video. From a design standpoint, if you haven't been a regular user of the Z Fold 3, you may not even notice the differences. So on paper, the Fold 4 is shorter, it's thinner, it's lighter than the 3, the hinge was redesigned, and the edges are a bit more squared off. The camera module is larger to accommodate the new 50 megapixel sensor and the rest of the fantastic camera upgrades that we're gonna talk about in a minute. But I do have to say that the Z Fold 4 wobbles a little bit more when it's placed flat on a table. Now buying a case can definitely help with that and I'll also talk about a few of the different cases that I've tried and then the pros and cons of each. The bezels on both the outer and inner displays are now a bit smaller, which is great. The cover display is slightly wider than on the Fold 3 and while two millimeters doesn't seem like a lot, it is a meaningful difference when you're using the phone. You could see more text at once, which requires less scrolling and the new design of the frame means that my thumb doesn't get caught up on the screen protector like it did with the Fold 3. Now, the crease on the inner display is a bit less noticeable, but you could still definitely see and feel it. So if that's a deal breaker for you, I just wanted to point that out. It's good to see Samsung continue to make improvements and I'm excited to see if they can completely remove it with the next version. And the crease doesn't bother me when I'm using the phone because it's usually between my thumbs. So I don't ever really feel it, but it does come into play when I'm writing or drawing with the S Pen. Both phones offer S Pen support on the main display. It doesn't work on the cover display and I'm not sure that it really matters too much because the cover display is fairly narrow. Now, the S Pen is also not included with either model, so you have to buy it separately. And you can use the Fold Edition of the S Pen if you only need it to work on these devices, or you can get the Pro Edition if you also want it to work on Galaxy tablets and laptops that support an S Pen. I think that for $1,800, Samsung should have included an S Pen just like they do with their much less expensive tablets. And I also want to point out that there's no place to store the S Pen on the device like there is with the S22 Ultra. So if you end up getting an S Pen, you'll also need to spend some extra cash on a case with a dedicated slot. Now I've used two different types of cases. The first one has the S Pen out to the side of the phone, which keeps the phone thinner, but makes it wider. The second case has a removable module that can store a stand for the phone or an S Pen holder. It's a slimmer design. It's more versatile because you don't need to make the phone more bulky when you don't need the S Pen, but it does mean that you have to remove the S Pen module if you want to wirelessly charge your phone. With the first case I mentioned, you don't have a problem because the S Pen is out of the way and the phone can sit flat on your wireless charger. And speaking of accessories and fun tech in general, brings me to today's sponsor, Best Buy, and their top deals. So I've been thinking of picking up a new FPV drone. I already have a bunch of drones, but this would be my first FPV one, and I'm super excited to see what kind of shots I can get with it. You can also find some great deals on Samsung tablets if you're looking to match something with your Z Fold 3 or 4. Now, I've been using the Tab S8 Ultra since it was released. The display is unbelievable to watch movies and play games on, and it really gives you the sense that you're on some sort of futuristic display. Now, if you prefer a desktop operating system, you can save on a Surface Pen when you buy a Microsoft Surface device. I've been using the Surface Pro 8, and it's a good fit if you want Windows 11 in a super portable two-in-one setup. Now, Best Buy always has great specials on TVs and make sure that you look for open box deals because you can find some crazy good discounts. So if you're looking for a new case or other accessories for your Fold 4 or a lot of other consumer electronics, but you don't wanna pay full price, check out Best Buy top deals for some great discounts and thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, we also see some important durability upgrades which should help protect your phone. So the frame and the hinge on the Fold 4 got Samsung's toughest armor aluminum frame. The back and cover displays were upgraded from Gorilla Glass Victus on the Fold 3 to a more scratch resistant Gorilla Glass Victus Plus and this should help resist more of those pesky scratches. Now, both phones have an IPX8 rating so you don't need to worry about snow or rain. I ran several tests with both phones from holding them under running water to fully submerging them for 30 minutes. Now the phones worked perfectly as soon as I wiped them down and then once the water fully evaporated, then the speakers went back to sounding normal. 
What we don't have on either one of these phones is dust resistance. And you do not wanna get sand into the hinge mechanism because there's really no way to get it out and you're gonna get a very unsettling crunch sound every time you open and close your phone. And now much has changed with the dynamic AMOLED displays in terms of specs. Both cover displays are 6.2 inches and both main displays are 7.6 inches. We're getting slightly different resolutions and both phones offer 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate and HDR10 Plus support. I'm super happy with the display quality on both phones, and aside from the cover display being slightly wider on the Fold 4, the user experience is essentially identical. With the main display, you have plenty of space for running two apps side by side or one on top of the other. You can tile a third app if you need more, and if you really wanna get crazy, then you can open up another one in a pop-up window. When it comes to watching movies or YouTube, you get a nice and large image. Now, you'll have fairly large letterboxing, which is the black bars at the top and the bottom, but that's not something that ever bothers me. Now, if you zoom in to fill the screen, then that, of course, goes away, but you're cropping the left and right sides of the image. Now, Samsung also made the under display camera a little less noticeable. Now, the pixels that cover it are a bit more dense, and that helps with hiding it. What hasn't really been improved is the quality of the under display camera, and it's only something that I would recommend that you use if you have no other option. On the other hand, the main camera module got a huge upgrade. So the Fold 3 has three 12 megapixel cameras, a wide, ultra wide, and then a two time telephoto. The Fold 4 now has a 50 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 10 megapixel telephoto with a three time optical zoom. So we're getting even more lossless zoom. Now these aren't just spec updates and they translate into a real and very meaningful improvement in image quality. So here's a camera and microphone comparison of the Z Fold 4 and the Galaxy Z Phone 3. This should give you a pretty good idea of the type of image quality that you're gonna get and the type of audio quality that you should expect. Both phones are the same distance away from me. You can see it's very, very similar framing. And I do wanna say that the Z Fold 4 has better controls on the screen, so I can actually control everything that I'm doing from the front instead of having to use the rear display to control the camera. I also wanted to give you a low light example. So right now I have all the lights in the studio are completely off, and this is what both phones, the Z Fold 4 and the Z Fold 3, are able to do with this amount of light. Overall, the Fold 4 has a much better camera system. The new hardware, together with improved image processing and a more powerful processor, give you noticeably better images in a variety of challenging lighting conditions. Now, the Fold 4 has a more natural reproduction of color, whereas the Fold 3 adds too much artificial saturation and it over brightens darker areas to where they can look unnatural. The Fold 4 now finally gives us a true flagship quality camera system in a foldable device. And that's something that a lot of users are going to love and it's one of the main reasons I have for recommending an upgrade. Another reason why you may want to consider moving to the Fold 4 is battery life. Now, even though both phones have a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip on the Fold 4 is more efficient than the Snapdragon 888, and it definitely squeezes more out of the same size battery. This was one of my few drawbacks with the Fold 3, and I'm super glad to see that Samsung addressed it. Now, the Fold 4 can be charged to 50% in 30 minutes, it has faster wireless charging at 15 watts, and both phones offer 4.5 watt reverse wireless charging. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip isn't just more efficient, it's also more powerful, and you could see that it handedly beats out the 888 in single and multi-core performance. When we look at GPU performance, again, we see a significant improvement with the newer chip, so let's talk about gaming. I was able to play all my favorite games on both phones. So Asphalt 9, Genshin Impact, PUBG, and then of course less demanding games. Now all of them I didn't have any issues. The Fold 4 did seem to run demanding games more smoothly, and I didn't experience small lags or skipped frames that I sometimes, although honestly rarely, notice on the Fold 3. The Fold 4 also seemed to stay cooler during longer gaming sessions, which suggests improved sustained performance, and that's something that I'm gonna revisit in my long-term review. 
Ultimately, it's clear that the Fold 4 received some really nice upgrades, so if you don't have either one, it's definitely the way to go. But the tougher question is, should you upgrade? And remember that I have links in the description for the phones and some great case options. The improvements in durability, the screen size, the under display camera visibility, and the slimmer design, they're nice to have, but they wouldn't be things that would move me to spend a serious amount of money on an upgrade. But if you want a much better camera system, you want a noticeably improved battery life, a nice bump in performance, and you can get a good deal on an upgrade, then I think it's something that you should consider. Now you should see how the Z Fold 4 compares with the S22 Ultra. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.